All right, it's now time to begin lesson 4B, which would make this an isometric drawing. Let's do some simple tasks first by changing our title block text to update our changes. Scale of the isometric will be twice as large as the original. First thing we need to do is scale our border and title block to give us more room to which to draw. So select scale. Draw a green window around your objects to select everything in that section right there. And now you just need to pick one more line at the top of your border. Hit enter. Our base point is going to be this corner we're drawing here. Our scale factor is going to be 2 because we're making it twice as large. Type in zoom extents to zoom out. And our drawing is ready for our isometric. We can switch our layer to the construction line layer, which we want our lines to be uh, thin such as this as we are creating our drawing and later we could change our completed drawing to object lines. So you know an isometric drawing has no hidden lines so the only line type we shall see are object lines. We will not need to draw any hidden lines. Also before we begin we need to set up our drawing environment. First thing we need to do is right click on snap mode, click on settings, Switch to what's called an isometric snap. Your crosshairs will change to a green and red crosshair. We also need to make sure ortho mode is on. We use ortho to draw lines parallel to our, to our crosshairs. We need to have set up our object snaps. These objects have settings. If you look at your drawing, you can kind of study and think about what type of lines we are going to need to snap to. Midpoint will not be one of them. Perpendicular will not be one of them because perpendicular does not exist in an isometric drawing. Nothing is 90 degrees to itself in an isometric drawing in most cases. So it looks just like intersection and endpoint are all we need. To control your crosshair, you use the F5 key, function 5. To change it to the three different directions the top, the right side view, and the front view. We're going to draw the base of this object first. The measurements you need for your block are, are provided for you on the drawing. One last thing you need to know about isometrics any object that is at, at an angle, such as this one here, 30 degrees, same up here, this line will not be at 30 degrees on an isometric. You cannot measure angles accurately in an isometric, so there's an alternative way in which to do that, which I'll show you today. In addition, the length of this line, which I'll add for future reference, the aligned length of that line will not be the same length in an isometric. It may either be longer or shorter because of the shape of an isometric drawing, since it's not a true 3D drawing. So you will notice that these angles will not be the same in isometrics, nor will these lengths be the same. Other than that, the only lines that are always the same length in an isometric drawing will be any line that is currently vertical or horizontal on a drawing, which basically implies everything else you see, except of course these two here. Let me add these measurements as well, so I can refer to those later when we discuss uh, lines at an angle and isometric. Okay, so we're going to draw with the value of 4 and 3 fourths, the value of 1. We'll set back a distance. I'm not sure what that value is right now. So I'll add another dimension. I need to know what that number is. So we can draw a part. Click the line command. Begin anywhere you like. Point to the right. Type in 4 and 3 fourths. 
this direction here is going to be 1. It goes back 2 and 1 fourth. Continues in this direction at a length of 5 eighths. Continue the drawing. There's the bottom of our heart. Or we could see it's also part of the top, which is right here. Or it could be the bottom, however you want to look at it. For my benefit, I'll assume it's the top surface of this right here. So I'm going to draw lines down three fourths. Here, here. You may be wondering why I drew this line here and this line here when I don't need them. I'm wondering that too, so I'm going to get rid of them. Looks like you need another measurement, this distance right here. One fourth. And I need another distance, one and one fourth, this measurement right here. You may also want this distance right here. Three fourths. Okay, to explain how to draw anything at an angle in an isometric, let me explain that to you now. First, let me draw some features on here to explain the process. I'm going to type in one of one. I mean one fourth. Remember, this is for demonstration only right now. I need that location. I'll add some dimensions to explain what I'm doing here. And one more line to explain the process of drawing angles in isometric. In order to draw angles in isometric, you have to draw the locations of the corners that make that angle. So assume that this is a triangle. Let me draw this out here. Let's pretend that we originally had a triangle over here. Whereas if you knew this length here and this length here, one one four three fourths, by drawing those two lines on an isometric drawing, you can draw the hypotenuse or this length here based on that information. In other words, you cannot draw a line and angle of 30 degrees here because it may or may not be that angle. As you can see here, it says it's 22 degrees. It says 30 degrees. That doesn't make any sense. But that's what the case is in an isometric drawing. They are not supposed to be the same. The 1 1 fourth will be the same as you see here and here because you can measure distances parallel to your crosshairs accurately, this distance and this distance here are equal for the same reason. Is this line here of 1 and 7 sixteenths that will not be the same length here, as you can see. I just explained to you how to draw angles on an isometric drawing. So I'll repeat those steps. I drew a measurement here for of 1 fourth. I added this measurement here and or here, and I drew lines this direction at one fourth. I could have also drawn a line this way at three fourths, a line this way at one one fourth, and then connect the lines over here. And so let's do that again on this side. I'll use color this time to highlight what I'm doing. If you have five key, get in the right direction. This direction will be three fourths. And this direction would be 1 and 1 fourth. And then I connect back to here. And there's my other side, my other angle. I will continue drawing and completing parts of the front view.
now that we're getting the hang of this, just change the line types to the correct type that we need, which is an object line. We'll be trimming later, of course. Let me remove these. Sometimes it's advantageous to use existing features you already have. For example, I need to recreate this down here. I don't want to have to redraw the lines again, so I'll use the copy command. If you're not familiar with copy yet, I'll demonstrate again the process to make it easier for you. Pick copy. The first step is to select objects that you want to copy, which would be this, this, and this, and even parts of this, maybe even this. Once you select your objects, click enter. The next two questions will be what's called your base point and basically your destination. So you think about what part of the lines I selected do I want to move somewhere else. For example, I would like this line down here, so the base point would be this location, so when I pick it, my final point would be right here, and this line would be copied down to here. I would not, for example, pick this base point here because if I move down here, I have nothing to grab onto. That makes no sense. It's not possible. Okay? For this example, I'll pick this as my base point, and now it says specify second point or displacement. I'll come down here, grab that end point, and I have my copy. 